Well, hey guys, what I'm going to do is bring you along with me as I replace this 18-year-old hose bib. About a year ago, I did replace the internals, but the faucet was so old that I had to Frankenstein it, meaning that you couldn't even get replacement parts for it. It lasted about a year or so, and it's starting to leak. So instead of trying to Frankenstein it again, I thought what I would do is just go ahead and replace it and do it in a way where if the hose bib fails again, I can just screw on a new hose bib. So you notice that that kind of dropped down there. I did go ahead and sweat the joint off prior to filming, but I did want to put it back on so you guys could see how it looked. To go ahead and sweat the joint off, it's relatively easy. You can get either a map gas container or a propane cylinder and use that with your torch attachment. I bought this at Home Depot. I think it was around like $50 or so. To me, it's a good investment. You can use these torches for all sorts of things. So the way that you sweat the joint off is you will heat up the fitting and the solder that solidifies the joint becomes liquid again and it will flow out. When you're taking it off, you don't need to force the fitting or anything. Basically, you just want to get a, get a little bit of a wiggle. So get a pair of pliers because your fitting is going to be relatively hot and just wiggle it back and forth and it will pop off once the solder has liquefied. Now that you've got it off, you need to clean up your pipe and also later your fitting. For me, I'm going to use a wire wheel, but you could use the sandpaper. Wire wheel is just a little bit faster for me. If you do use the sandpaper, just give it a uh, scrub like this on the top and then again on the bottom and you will be all set. We have here the old hose bib and then we also have my new fitting in the new hose bib. This is, I believe, a quarter turn and it has a ball valve. Some people may say, well, why don't you just go ahead and replace the hose bib with another one and, and forego the fitting? And the reason is, is this eventually will fail. And I wanted to use a fitting to where that I can take this particular hose bib and you can see here it's got the threads and I'll show you the ball valve here. And the reality is, is why, while I do think this is a little bit better, it can fail, but if it does fail with a new fitting, I'll just be able to screw this one off and put a new one on. So it will be a much simpler repair. The adapter I got, it says half inch by three quarter. Half inch is the pipe, three quarter is the threads on the end. And you just want to make sure whatever hose bib you get that it matches up with whatever your thread is. In my case, it would be the three quarter. I did buy a kit and it came with the brush and the solder and the flux. So most of the fittings will be clean enough out of the bag, but it doesn't hurt to give them a good brushing and just get rid of any spots that you see if there is any in there at all. As I said before, I did buy the kit. The kit came with the flux. And it also came with the solder. It came with that brush that you saw earlier. And I think I paid around $20 for it. So now that, uh, oh, oh, one other thing. I do have a mirror and I use the mirror to be able to see on the uh, bottom of the joint to make sure it goes through. So anyway, now that everything is all cleaned up, put the flux on the inside of the fitting and on the outside of the pipe. And... I was taught the way that you do a joint like this is that you heat from the bottom. And the reason that you do that is the heat will rise. It makes the heating time for the top of the joint a little less. I was also taught that you heat the fitting and not the pipe. And again, once you have it all soldered up, you can use your mirror there to take a look at it. So again, I'll heat the bottom first and the flux will sort of liquefy and as the fitting gets to a certain temperature and I don't know what that temperature is but as it gets hot enough you'll go ahead and test with your solder wire there 
and that will eventually melt. You'll get what's called a capillary response with the flux, and that will draw the liquefied solder in and around that joint. And that's what gives you a water a watertight seal. So with our particular setup, we will need to use a little bit of Teflon tape. You can get pretty much any kind you want. Make sure, of course, that you let your joint cool. I did this about, oh, 45 minutes or so, so it was good and cool. Put And then you can put your hose bib on. In my case, I needed to make sure that I had a washer with it. You don't need to over tighten this. There is a risk if you do get it on there too tight that you can uh, snap your joint or break the joint of the solder. So here, this is actually the next day. It's an ugly solder joint, I will admit that, but it is watertight. And I don't know, again, if this is the best way to do it. This is the way that kind of I was taught as a kid to do it. And uh, I haven't really ever had any problems. So anyway, I hope it helps.